also example two. A particle, <clears throat> so let's see, a particle combined to move on the surface of a cylinder. So let's see, let's make our cylinder, actually let's give ourselves a little bit more room than that. So we have a particle, it's confined to move on the surface of the cylinder. There's gonna be some radius r, uh, and then there's gonna be some distance from the origin we're gonna call little r. Because it's confined to move on the surface of the cylinder, but that it can move in any direction, right? Um, okay, so let's keep rolling with this. We're gonna be doing in cylindrical coordinates. I am really sorry though if you were writing it down. I did not I mean to do that. So in cylindrical coordinates, the, uh, the coordinates are gonna be rho, phi and z but here we have the specific case where our rho coordinate is equal to the radius the bead cannot move in the radial direction uh so it's going to be confined on the surface in that regard but it can move around like this in the phi direction or up and down okay <laughs> good 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 um <laughs> you'll be worried there and like i said we're going to apply some force of hooke's law in three dimensions where F is a radial force that equals minus KR. We're going to try to figure out what kind of motion the particle would have with this type of, of force applied to it. Okay? You can actually read what he writes. Thanks, dude. <laughs> so we're considering a particle of mass M, frictionless cylinder, radius R, cylindrical coordinates, rho, phi, and Z, where rho is equal to R. And that's not going to change. That's the, con that's the constraint, right? And we're going to use, so we have two generalized coordinates. So our generalized coordinates. Are Z and Phi. <clears throat> Z and Phi. Uh, oh, so we need to go to the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is equal to one half m v squared but we need to figure out what v is right and we have our three types of velocities we have velocity in the y direction or z excuse me in the z direction velocity in the phi direction and the velocity in the rho direction of course the velocity in the rho direction is going to be equal to zero <sighs> can't be anything other than zero because it's constrained on the surface the velocity in the phi direction is the radius times the phi dot, or the derivative of phi with respect to time, right? The angular velocity, in some cases, some people would say omega, depending on what angle it is, right? But that would be, uh, that would be the tangential velocity as it moves around the surface. And then the last velocity would be in z, and that's easy, that's just the uh, z dot. Change the Z with respect to time. Are you using polar coordinates? Yeah, cylindrical coordinates, yes. Okay. So now we can rewrite our kinetic energy in terms of these, and that's just gonna be one half M times the velocity squared, which if we're dealing with R, so it's really like R dot, right? <clears throat> and what's that gonna be? That's gonna be R, uh, big R. When I say R dot, I mean little r. Um, big R squared, phi dot squared plus Z dot squared. Okay. Okay. So there's the, uh, tangential or there's the kinetic energy term, um, for a force. Okay. So for a force, our force is Hooke's law force, right? In three dimensions. <clears throat> um, so then the potential we can get is just going to be the standard potential for, uh, Again, for I posted force. a link. Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, yeah, but r is equal to the square root. Again, we can just look at the picture and see that r is equal to the square root of r squared plus z squared. So, uh our potential term, I think I have an extra square in the notes too, if you're following along. Uh, it says but, and then it says r squared is equal to the square root of r squared plus z squared. It's supposed to be r squared is equal to r squared plus z squared, or r is equal to the square root of r squared plus z squared. 
Whew. Good. Now, the potential is then this, so then we can rewrite the Lagrangian as the two of them combined, and we get one half m times the quantity large r squared phi dot squared plus z dot squared minus one half k r squared plus z squared. <clears throat> All right. So we get two degrees of freedoms and two generalized coordinates, z and phi. So of course, we're going to have the, the equations of motion. So for z, we'll have, and I'm going to write out the equations of motions every time. Um, Unit swap. Are there units, though? <laughs> Who did a unit swap? I feel like I have to refund that. <laughs> Sorry, Jax. I'll have to Just swap that. something. Just, <laughs> Just swap something. Okay. Um, we're going to swap all of these to thetas. The superior angle. It's going to drive people nuts doing things in cylindrical with theta. <laughs> it's dirty. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be really rough. <laughs> Not theta, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, she said swap something. So I think we're in theta now. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, that's supposed to be DZ anyways. What am I doing? I think we're in theta now. Thanks to, thanks to the unit swap. There we go. <laughs> no, this is Patrick. Um, <clears throat> so we are doing DZ for the first equation of motion, DT. Uh, <laughs> guy is going to drive, <laughs> drive Tyrion mad. I love it. Uh, so what do these boil down to? Well, th we take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to Z. And we have this term right here, which turns out to be minus KZ. And then the derivative with respect to Z dot comes from this side. But we're going to also take the time derivative of that. So let me show, I guess, this let me is show completely this. unnatural. Okay, so if we, we, what's the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to z dot? Well, it's going to end up being, uh, let's see, take the 2 down, <laughs> and it's mz dot, and then the derivative with respect to time, so we have negative kz is equal to mz double dot. Okay. <clears throat> so that kind of makes perfect sense, right? The Hooke's Law is equal to mass times acceleration. That seems good. Right? That's what you would expect to see. Let's think about the theta direction now. So we have the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta, which is equal to d dt d theta d Lagrange, dl, excuse me, d theta dot. But what's the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to theta? Well, there is no thetas in the Lagrangian, right? Anyway, so then we have the, the dl d theta, so then we can get this, and there is no theta in this Lagrangian, so it's zero, and then there is a theta dot, so we can take the derivative with respect to theta dot, and we get the derivative with respect to time of m r squared theta dot. <laughs> um, and these two equations tell us, under the following of the force, that the particle feels the same harmonic motion in the z direction, right? Harmonic motion in the z direction makes perfect sense, but this time um, it feels constant motion in the theta direction, right? There's no acceleration here. We just end up getting, if it's a der derivative with respect to time of some number here, means that this number, is, and if that equals zero, then it's a constant over on this side. So if we wanted to solve for theta dot, we'd get some constant. So while you apply this harmonic motion to the uh, particle that's stuck on the surface, 
So now it's the theta dot is a constant. So as it moves around, it's going to be harmonic motion in the up and down in the Z coordinate, but it's going to be a constant velocity. So when I say harmonic motion, I mean like it's going to be second constant needs to start with a K. So it is different than the first. What do you mean start with a K so it's different than the first? They're all just constants. Does it really matter? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's all just a constant, right? Who cares? That's my... When it comes to a constant... So it flies away. No, it's constrained. The constant velocity in the... In the, in the uh, they are different. You and natural direction. units. <laughs> I'm surprised that the acceleration is in the Z direction. It's not reduced by the constraint in some way, but my intuition must be wrong. Um, well, there is no constraining force in Lagrangian mechanics, remember. So we're not worried about the normal force or anything like that. Uh, there's no like, fr it's a frictionless cylinder and everything. So there's really like, as you apply Hooke's law, then it has harmonic motion in the Z direction again. But, uh, and it's the Hooke's law, it says in the beginning, um, directed toward the origin. So the Hooke's law is towards the origin this way. So as it comes down, you would expect it to have some sort of motion, some harmonic motion up here in the Z direction. But yeah, as it makes its way around the surface, it's not gonna have that. It's not gonna have any type of acceleration around the surface. It's just gonna have constant uh, theta dot. And when I say acceleration, I mean angular acceleration, right? This is angular velocity is constant. So the angular velocity is constant. 